everybody, it's me Talia and welcome back to a new video. Today's video is not really going to be original because I can't think of original things, but today we are going to be reading Reddit stories. And let me just say, there are some really juicy ones from Am I the Asshole? Am I Wrong? And re Relationship Advice. And I saved some from what I'm going to read today. When I checked a few days ago, there were other ones that I saved, but now they're gone. And I wanted to say that some of them were just really concerning. It involves um, a girl who was very young in her 20s dating someone who was literally in their 30s, talking about and being really creepy towards this person, saying that they thought this person, who was 16 at the time in high school, looked very sexy. And let me just say, I think, I think this one said that they met when she was younger and was older. Other than that, it was really disgusting and I thought I saved it, but damn, it was gone. Also, I really want to thank everyone for 200 subscribers. I never thought that I had that many, but I'm so grateful for you all subscribing and liking my content, I think. And I never thought that my Omegle video would uh, blow up, kind of. And to be honest, I didn't think it would because it's just so freaking stupid because I said random words, but I did and thank you. And anyways, let's get into the video. I hope you enjoy. Our first story that we're reading today is Am I the Asshole? And the title says, Am I the Asshole for sending my ex-wife a modeling opportunity? Hmm. My ex-wife had worked as a fashion and magazine model when we met. We had two daughters to get together, but, horrible mar but a horrible marriage that lasted more than de a decade than it should have. I am now happily married with a, a wonderful woman. My wife is smart, funny, and the best lover I've ever had. She is also a professional at a, a professional at a storage institution with great responsibility and the pay that comes with it. I'm also doing well and we're building a great life together. My ex's choices have not been good as good as she is struggling to pay her bills. I have zero desire to be with my ex and an awful person, especially to my wife. She only has a high school degree and limited job prospects. However, I like to see her happy or at least stable for her benefit for, of my daughters. A few days ago, an article came up in my newsfeed that a designer is looking for models over 40. I texted my my ex the link and she responded, Thanks. I assume you still think I'm pretty enough to be a model. I responded with a short ha 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 you're welcome thanks for thanking, thanking me message to cut it short without being rude no further better my wife my wife feels i should have responded you assume wrong i might feel sending the article was a compliment to my ex-wife who has been known to call her up in the past and yell at her about how she is not a part of my family and that i am only with her because my ex my ex-wife left me. My wife is understandably upset and feels I paid my ex a compliment and didn't and retreat her assumption. I find her pretty. I felt I was just advising my ex about a job opportunity. I now see that it could have been seen as confident. I know I'm an idiot. I feel like an asshole. Am I? What do I do now? Oh boy. For someone who is not in any relationships and doesn't have a love life. I feel like I can understand maybe how the wife is feeling because her ex, because her ex-wife is literally being mean to her and talking about her past. And you know, no one should ever do that to any family members, especially exes, because that's not good. If if you comment about, I assume you still think I'm pretty, and you respond with ha ha. I I guess that still counts as like, oh yeah, you're complimenting someone. And I feel like he should have replied. Maybe if replied a little, a little bit different. Maybe not too harsh, like you assume wrong, but you know, maybe not respond at all. Just don't respond. Maybe just don't respond at all. Just we have some comments here that say otherwise. One person says, Nah, you sound like a very kind person, especially so to want, especially so to want to help out a toxic ex. My wife. As it says, my wife feels I should have responded. You assume wrong. My wife feels sending an article was a compliment to my ex-wife. 
now down there and says, frankly, it would make no sense to shut down the compliment even if you actually were given one. The point was to help her get a job. Modeling is the job that she has done, so it make, so make, so makes sense to send the job she knows qualifies to do. If you had refunded and said, no, you're not, then it could probably ruin her wanting to fly in general. Ex-wife was either making a joke at the fact that you sent her the article or reading it into much content Current wife was definitely reading it into, oh. But considering the ex-wife treats her badly, is un, it's understandably why she's upset with you helping your ex. I would say you could have shut down the ex-wife joke says slight statement stating that you had nothing to do with how you're pursuing her and that you're just trying to help her find a job. I think I should have said that better. I, I feel like if the wife the actual wife who was making a joke it could have been fine but since she's been treated horribly by her like by her ex by the ex-wife i could see why she could be upset because again no one deserves to be treated like shit especially with their exes and i know the ex still wants to have a job in modeling that's fine that's fine. Like, you can still help your ex kind of in some ways. Constantly asking for, like, other stuff and being weird. Don't acknowledge them. Comments they're saying are literally true. And I know that I should have... I know... I know... I know what is wrong with this and what's not wrong. I think the wife can, is understandable. And I know he should be... I uh, should understand, too. I think they'll I think they'll be able to talk it out later on and hopefully everything goes well and hopefully in the future the ex doesn't bother her wife bothers his wife anymore because that's not good. Story two. My best friend of six years, twenty one male, gave me twenty one male home homie head out head, but I think I like it. I was reading the title the first time and was like, what the fuck? Okay, I see. Uh, average Reddit story. Okay, so I'm really a bad storyteller. So it, it, if this kind of sounds messy, sorry. Also, a throwaway account. Anyway, so recently I broke up with my girlfriend of like two years. It really broke me as I was thinking about proposing to her. Anyways, all my friends have noticed I've been really down the past two weeks. Especially my best friend, me and him have been friends since like fifth grade but not not but got really close in 10th grade he came over to my house yesterday to play r6 as i've been the past weeks i was pretty down and grumpy he started t talking to me about her and i don't even remember how it happened but en ended it ended with him giving me head <laughs> after we were done he especially told me that he was the one it, this was one time thing and we got back to playing r6 like nothing happened i felt a lot better and it wasn't even it wasn't in a, such a mood we never experienced any gay thoughts or feelings for each other or even or even or anyone else and for that matter and i never experienced with gay stuff but i kind of liked it even though he stressed stressed me to stressed me to a one time thing and not make it weird i liked it no clue how to even pursue the friendship after this do i act like nothing happened sorry if this is making messy again i'm, I'm a bad storyteller <laughs> listen sometimes you just need a good old fucking with your best friend especially if you're sad again i have never experienced any of this my relationships don't last at all. Having the best night ever with your homie friend, and now you think it's weird. I definitely think you should talk, talk, and have com com communication, and have a conversation, and I'll let it down. And and do they feel weird? Because you said you feel weird. Because OP said they feel weird. So if it's if it's weird, I think you should have a conversation and talk it out and if worse comes to worse and they make a big deal of it or it, they think it's still weird I might have to end the friendship but I don't know I don't think you would want to do that because 10 years 
That's a long time. That's a long time. And some comments here. And so this person says, return the favor when he's having a rainy day that should even things out. You should really like, you sound like a really good friend. Homie head, LMAO. He offered to give you head and he stressed, and he stressed not to make it weird, LOL. You can absolutely try and discuss with this, with this your friend. That's what I'm saying. Whenever it's just clear, clear the air or see what else there is if you do if he doesn't want to talk respect that that's what this person said respect it and yeah respect just respect it there's definitely a way to discuss this without making it weird i think avoiding talking about it would create a distance and therefore make it weird i think the best option is to not talk to him about it potentially remind means for both of you in regards for your own sexuality and friendship and go from there. I think it could be a very relatory conversation and good luck and I'm sorry to hear about your breakup. Story three. Friend of 10 years, 22 male, invades my 23 female privacy. I will apologize in advance for this long story, but I am desperate for advice as this has been eating me up inside and do not know how to proceed. For context, my friend Jared, male, and I, 22 female, have been friends since 8th grade. We met due to him being childhood childhood friends with my ex-boyfriend, Pat, 23 male. Pat and I broke up in December 2022 and have been mutual friends ever since. After our breakup, Jared and I became better, better friends as he helped support me after the breakup. Pat and I used to joke now how he thought Jared, Jared had a little crush on me, but it never really bothered me as obviously ex-girlfriends of your friends is off limits. Now for what happened. In July 2023, Pat, Jared, a couple of our girlfriends, and I got together to have a 4th of July party and a sleepover. We were drinking, blowing off fireworks, and overall just having a great time. It was around 2 a.m. and I decided to go to bed if I had to work the next morning at 9 a.m. So I go upstairs, set my alarm, and plug my phone next to me. And a couple hours later, I wake up to find my phone missing. I was concerned. And I was late for work, so I ran, ran downstairs to find it. Instead, I find Jared laying on the couch, masturbating to an old video of Pat and I having and of course on my phone i obviously am outrageous and started yelling saying what are you doing pat was sleeping on the couch across from jared but by now pat wakes up to find me screaming jared is extremely intoxicated and barely even know how to understand what is happening pat and i make jared go upstairs to sleep it off i have i now have my phone and realize he had my phone for four hours he accidentally unshared my location with a couple of my friends at 3 a.m. I found him masturbating at 7 a.m. I went home after I got my phone back to try to calm down. Jared sends me a couple of text messages hours later, hours later after he sobered up. I told him I am not ready to talk and I will, I will let him know when I am. About a week goes by and I decide we need to talk. So Pat and I meet Jared at a bar to discuss. I started off by telling Jared the only way we could even possibly be acquaintances in the future is if he 100% honest with us. So I asked Jared if he had done this before. He admits that he's done, done been doing it for about three years, about 20 to 30 times. Even when, even when Pat and I were in a relationship, Jesus. When we would have sleepovers with our friends, there would have been multiple times at these sleepovers where I would wake up and my phone would be in a different place than it was and that when I went to sleep. I chalk it up with me being intoxicated and silly, but now I realize there were times Jared took my phone and didn't get caught. I even asked him if he, he had sent me anything to himself and he said, yeah, when I caught him and got my phone back, his messages were deleted. After that, I left with even more discomfort and confusion than before. How could someone who I trusted and loved as a friend do this to me over and over again? There were nudes, videos, pictures of me as a minor, and just on my personal embarrassing 
thoughts on my phone. I felt angry and scared, and I have not talked since individually, but I have seen him in group context. As Pat and it, my other friends who were aware of what happened have given, given him. When I see him, it's almost like I go back to that horrible feeling of discomfort and anger. How can my friends and Pat forgive him when he did something that, something like that to me over and over again? How can Pat forgive Jared for invading my privacy when we were in a relationship? How can Pat forgive Jared for his, him invading his privacy for by watching a video of him having intercourse? How can I be friends with people who forgive someone for doing that? Does Jared deserve a chance for goodness? How can I trust? How be, how can I become be, how can I become how can I begin to trust new people, especially a friend of ten years, do that to me? Would you consider this sexual assault? Okay, so first of all, what the fuck? That's actually disturbing. And the fact that Jared Jared Jared, Jared has been doing this for three years and twenty and thirty to twenty times, and doing this and been doing it as she was a minor. That's actually fucking disgusting, and honestly, I think there are multiple side and multiple types of sexual assault that can happen. And I'm truly sorry that you've been through this, and that's not okay. And the fact that your friends forgave him means they're not actually your friends anymore and if they know that this has happened to you they would drop him off drop him immediately but they're not and that's fucking disgusting i think drop them all and find new people that actually care about you and know and won't do the same thing <laughs> that jared did this is disgusting. That's not okay. In your privacy, took your phone and didn't think about any of it. Let's say maybe go to the they have the police involved, but I'm pretty sure they might not do nothing. But still, there's a chance that he could be charged for this. I'm not. I don't know anything about law, but still. That's not okay, and I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Some comments, and let me just read them. This is horrible. Not sure how, how many laws were broken here, but you have every right to be upset. I'm sure you get a lot of down votes, but my position has been, if you don't want intimate pics of videos of yourself disturbed without your permission, maybe you should, maybe you should create such media. Anything digital has the ability to be hacked, stolen, distributed, and once it is in the cloud, there is no retrieving it. I wouldn't trust this guy as far as you would, could throw him. Throw him in. Sounds like you need some new friends. Super gross and super creepy. My advice is that you break off the friendship only because as a guy, I feel like you cannot trust. He has any boundaries and no way he could be trusted around you alone. If he was willing to take your phone and violate your privacy, where does it stop? What rule is he really going to follow? If I had a crush, I would not violate trust. I would not be violating trust for sure. Seems like some something you would want to build, not exploit. That's what I'm fucking saying. That's what I'm saying. Some people say you have to drop your friends. Why are your friends still forgiving him and hanging out with him? Because now every time you see him, you just feel hurt and you get flashbacks. <sighs> Girl, honey, I'm so sorry. You need new friends. And if I if I knew you in real life, I would be your friend in, in an instant and I would throw that guy out. Gross and freaking weird. Story four. I, 36 non-binary, think my partner, 40 non-binary, really messed up in this situation. I didn't witness. Is it okay to say so? I, 36, partner 40, recently purposed it in a tennis tournament and refused to reschedule a con console double match with base with ba with because they didn't want because they didn't want to enable the rich a holes at the tournament. I can practically understand because they were players, including a much older gentleman and my partner, a 
among others. They were pushed to play on a very whirling schedule in order to accompany some out of town players. At first glance, I thought my sounded that they I thought they sounded very justified. As it happened, they won their division and tournament, and as a member of the Red Committee, distinctly scheduled them for too many events. So they did play a lot of matches and were understandably tired. Unfortunately, the more they elaborated, the worse I thought their behavior sounded. Apparently, one of their matches got bumped a lot. They didn't get some warning. They, they did get some warning and showed up early. And the physical reasons they mentioned for not jumping into the match a full hour from earlier. Needed to warm up to use the bathroom, etc. So I'm fine, but they mentioned that their opposite asked if they were ready and they refused to even acknowledge him the first time he asked. Then they were given a they gave a response that sounded pretty passive aggressive. I thought that was bad, but after the match the tournament the director asked if they'd be willing to push back the console match. And they said no because they didn't want to and bail the rich people to mess up the whole schedule. I was already a little taken back that they said that out loud to everyone, and then, then, and then they took it even further and demanded to re if a refund for the consolation match, which they actually canceled for out for players. Apparently, everyone was begging them to proceed with the match and off and offering a great time slots confronting them, but they described as a nice bullying. Nice bully. Honestly, I'm very embarrassed how they acted and kind of upset. Their account, I wasn't there. This was definitely because with some of a relationship issues, but at the same time, I would have guessed that they told me, told that the story in a way that made them sound less out of line than they were. So I'm pretty worried that they buried a lot of bridges here. I want to talk to them about it and encourage them to apologize, but I'm not sure how to or even if I should, since I wasn't there. Okay, this was kind of a tricky one. And the fact that your partner did tell you the whole story, I kind of feel like maybe you're not adding more parts to it. And it's a tennis ball tournament. I guess I feel like I feel like that person, um, the, their partner, the partner definitely was being some rooted at some point. Even if you weren't there, I think you should have like a little talk to talk about it with them because that because it has because you two need good communication. If they don't want to talk about it and if they're mean or like rude, then I feel like that feel like something's up and you definitely should investigate. There were no comments on that and I don't really know what to say. But anyone, if you if anyone watches this video. Comment down below what your thought was. Anyways, these were stories that I read, and yeah, some of them were honestly freaking crazy. I think the the person invading the space and freaking masturbating on their on their phone was honestly freaking disturbing, and that was the worst one ever. And um, it was all it it's all really disgusting. Yeah, these stories kind of a mess. If you like videos like this, please subscribe for more videos in the future. Comment down below. Follow my, so follow my social medias are down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!